Hi everybody, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and today is our third lecture or our third video on section 7. So it's S7E3. It is the uh, section 7 is kind of like chapter 7 and it's called the quantum mechanical view of the atom and periodicity. So if you go down and, and see the description below this video, you should be able to see all the topics we're going to cover today. Um, we have some sample problems at the end. So we'll start off with a little bit of background and a little bit of lecture, and then we'll go into some sample problems, okay? All right, so the atomic spectrum of hydrogen and the Bohr model of hydrogen. All right, so the first little dash or the first little bullet point for today says, before we proceed, it's important to know, just kind of know it in the background, before we proceed, know that a continuous spectrum is a rainbow-like spectrum that occurs when a prism diffracts or splits white light. Um, one example of this is a rainbow, right? You have the uh, white light is split by the, the water droplets, or they're kind of like prisms, and they diffract or split white light into its various uh, colors. Second bullet point, when a hydrogen atom okay, absorbs energy, H nu, its single electron becomes excited and moves to a higher energy state. When the excited, see, the excited electron doesn't like to stay up there forever, so when it later falls back or relaxes down to its ground state, it's going to emit energy of a specific frequency or wavelength. So let's read that again. When the hydrogen atom absorbs energy, H nu, its single electron becomes excited and moves to a higher energy state. When the excited electron falls back or relaxes to its ground state, the electron releases that same amount of absorbed energy by emitting light of various wavelengths or frequencies or energies, right? We have the equation that relates energy to frequency to wavelength from the last video. Now, what results when that happens is something called a line emission spectrum of hydrogen. So it's not a continuous spectrum with all the colors. It's called a line emission spectrum. And if you take a look at the textbook or on Google, you see it's got hydrogen in particular has four little lines. Okay. And, and we'll do our best to draw a representation of that pretty soon. So not on this page, but on the next page, I believe. So here's a visual of three types of relaxations of an electron from three different excited energy states or excited energy levels, n equals 3, n equals 4, and n equals 5. So remember, the ground state would be n equals 1, right? But these guys are going to relax not all the way down, but they're going to fall back to the n equals 2 state, okay? So if you give me a second here, I'm going to draw first kind of like a vertical representation and then I'm going to kind of I'm going to take these lines and imagine like having a little rake toy in a sand pit and taking these four lines and drawing them all the way around the nucleus in a circle. I'll do my best to explain that as we go here, okay? So what I'm drawing is I've got my n equals 1 ground state. That's where the electron likes to chill out and hang out, okay? So the n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4 and so on. These are all excited energy levels. Now what I'm drawing is I'm drawing three different scenarios. You have the, on the far left that squiggly down arrow is going from n equals 3 to n equals 2. It's relaxing down to the n equals 2 and then if you look at the middle squiggly arrow thing that is the electron that's been excited to n equals 4 relaxing or falling back to the n equals 2 third squiggly line is an electron that was excited all the way up to the n equals 5 excited state, relaxing all the way down to the n equals 2 state. Not the ground state, but the n equals 2 state. And yes, electrons can relax down to the n equals 1 state. It's just out of the visible region. We can't see it. So it says down there the ground state is a relaxed, unexcited state. Now in 1913, Niels Bohr proposes that those little lines I've drawn on the left over there correspond to concentric circles around the nucleus. Now I've done a, the best I can here to draw these concentric circles for n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
Okay? So Niels Bohr proposes that these correspond to an electron's circular orbit. So these three relaxations correspond to three of the four lines in the line spectrum for hydrogen. Okay? So we are going to show all four on the next page. I've only shown you three. But here is the line emission spectrum for hydrogen. I'm going to draw four vertical lines. And they all occur at specific wavelengths. And those wavelengths correspond to a certain color. Remember, uh, visible light goes from 400 nanometers all the way to 750 nanometers, right? So you got 400 to 450 is violet. And I believe red is 700 to 750 nanometers, all right? OK, so 410 nanometers, that corresponds to a violet line. 434 nanometers corresponds to a blue-violet line. And then you have a blue-green line at 486. And all the way at 656, you have an orange line, OK? So now, in Bohr's circular orbit model, OK, remember, the circular the circular orbit model just takes, it takes, a, remember those vertical lines I drew like that? Imagine there being a little dot to the left of where I've written the word ground state on the previous page, and then taking those four lines and just making a circle around. That's basically what Bohr's circular orbit model is. Now, in Bohr's circular orbit model, the electron cannot be found just anywhere it wants. It can't be found just at any energy level. Okay, the electron cannot be found just anywhere, but instead only in those n equals one, two, three energy level orbits, those quantized energy levels. Remember in the last video I talked about going up stairs versus walking up a gradual incline? You can only go up certain elevations at a time, these packets or these quantum levels. Okay, same thing today. Now, mathematically, these quantized energy levels available to hydrogen's electron are given by the following equation. Energy equals minus 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18th joules times Z squared, where Z is the nuclear charge, so for hydrogen, Z is plus one, divided by N squared, where N is the uh, energy level one, two, or three. All right? So, I believe that's called the Rydberg equation, um, R-Y-D-B-E-R-G, the Rydberg equation. That's either the Rydberg equation or it's the next equation that I'm going to draw later on in our notes. But both of them are essentially the same thing, and the name of the equation is not important. All right, here's an example. Best way to practice is to use examples. We have this example, and I believe two more examples coming up in this video. Calculate the energy required to excite the hydrogen electron. So if you're going to excite an electron, it's going to go from a low n equals state to a higher number, a higher n number. So calculate the energy level. I'm sorry, calculate the energy required to excite the hydrogen electron from level n equals 1, that's the ground state, to level n equals 2. Also, calculate the wavelength of light that must be absorbed by a hydrogen atom in its ground state to reach this excited state. So basically, if we're going to excite an electron from n equals 1 to n equals 2, we're going to have to absorb energy to get the electron to that higher energy level. So they want us to calculate the energy. We can use the uh, Rydberg equation, E equals minus 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18th joules times Z squared over N squared. Well, if it's hydrogen, Z is 1, and we're going to go from n equals 1 to n equals 2. So our first equation is for n equals 1, and that's equal to minus 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18th joules. All right, everything in parentheses is just 1. Now, for the n equals 2, we make an n squared down there of 2 squared. So I'm multiplying negative 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18th times 1 over 4. I get negative 5.445 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. Subtract E2 minus E1, you get 1.633 times 10 to the minus 18th joules. Now that's a positive number, right? Delta E is positive, and that makes sense to us because we have to gain energy to excite the electron. We have to absorb energy to excite the electron. When the ener if the electron ever collapses back down, which it will, the sign would be negative. Now to calculate the wavelength, I can just use the equation we've learned in prior videos. 
Uh, delta E equals H nu equals HC over wavelength. We want to find the wavelength, so I don't need to use the H nu part. So I end up with delta E equals HC over wavelength. Rearrange it here at the top of this page of notes. Wavelength is equal to HC over delta E. So my wavelength is equal to H, which is Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds, times C, the speed of light. HC is a constant. Uh, H and C are constants. 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, divided by delta E, which I just solved for, 1.633 times 10 to the minus 18th joules. And I get a wavelength of 1.216 times 10 to the minus 7th meters. Okay. So if you ever find the energy, you can find frequency or wavelength. If you ever find wavelength, you can find energy or frequency. If you ever find frequency, you can find energy or wavelength, right? Note, in the last example, the one I just did, the first equation used is often rewritten as the following because you're, not, you're never really involved with just one, equal, one single n equal state. Usually you're ab absorbing energy and going up or you are relaxing back down when you emit. So we have an equation that's much more functional here. Delta E equals minus 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18th joules times quantity or times parentheses one over n final squared minus one over n initial squared, okay? Now for hydrogen, Z equals one, which is why I have one over, all right? If I was working with a helium atom or something like that, it wouldn't be a one over NF final minus one over n initial squared. But for the most part with these problems in general chemistry, we, we, they, they want us to do these problems in regards to hydrogen. All right, next example. Calculate the energy required to remove the electron from a hydrogen atom in its ground state. We want to pluck off um, the hydrogen uh, electron. So n initial is one, ground state. Nf we'll just call infinity for entirely removing it. Okay, and we use that equation that we just had, the equation I just put a box on, and we end up with the following. Delta E equals minus 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18th joules times, parentheses, 1 over infinity, infinity squared is just infinity, right? Minus 1 over 1 squared. So the answer is delta E equals negative uh, 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18th joules times minus 1, which gives me positive 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18th joules. If I'm going to excite an electron from n equals one to n equals infinity, that means I'm removing it, making a H plus ion, a proton, right? So this is the energy required to totally remove a ground state electron from a hydrogen atom, to pluck it off, okay, to ionize it. All right, so uh, my website is chemistrynotes.com. All my general chemistry notes are there. All my organic chemistry notes are there. So if you like the way I do these uh, kind of sort of easy to follow handwritten notes, uh, head on over to that website and uh, everything is there. All right. Have a good one. And I'll see you next time.